Hello, everybody, and welcome to Crochet, a Canadian crochet podcast. I am your hostess, Claudia. Thank you so much for joining me today. I herald from the base of the Rocky Mountains in southern Alberta, Canada, and I love to crochet. Let's get started. It has been a minute, hasn't it? I am so, so sorry that it has taken so long to get another episode out, but I... I know I keep saying I figured out my schedule to get all of this stuff done, but then it doesn't happen and all of that. But hopefully I'm crossing my fingers, toes, all of that good stuff that I can get some stuff sorted out for us so that I can keep doing this because I really, really miss having the podcast and interacting with everybody. And I miss watching all of the lovely crochet podcast uh, stuff that you guys all put out and knitting and all of that stuff as well. So here we go. Um, I was thinking about how to kind of get back to this since I've had such a long break from it. And I figured I actually, I've, I've done some research as well. It's like, should I reboot the channel or should I just like delete the whole thing and start all over again? And the consensus was like, it's fine to jump back in. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just going to jump back in, get back on a regular posting schedule, all of that stuff. And hopefully then we can continue sailing along as we would like. So that's what we're, that's what I'm going to do today. Um, also thinking about, I, I don't have, I'm sure I have stuff that I was working on that I'm still working on. I'm looking at one of them right now, the waffle blanket, which I was hoping would be done like two months ago. It's not done. It's not. Um, it's so close. I've only got five colors left. That's it. So not really that much work left on the waffle blanket, but, um, I thought today with the uh, re that I would show you a new acquisition or a few new acquisitions I've got and then we'll do some putting together and all of that and that will be our back back at it episode so here we go um today I am wearing a triangle granny or don't, granny square granny stripe cardigan shawl wrap thing I have a bunch of these I absolutely love them um, I just wanted a little something today because while it's feeling summery, it is also not even summery. Spring is like peeking its head out here, around here finally, which has taken its dear sweet time. I'm not going to lie. Um, I sometimes still just want something to put on myself or over my legs or something like that. So that's what I'm wearing today. I made this out of, it was either Burnett Premium in some golden wheat or it was curry from the the um, Michaels brand Craft Smart yarn. That's all I can remember. It's one of those two colors. I'd say it's probably Craft Smart by the feel of it, but I made it long enough ago that I can't remember which yarn I used. But it's one of those two colors, and the colors are actually pretty similar. But yeah, I really love this. Great, great thing to make. Okay, so what what did we acquire recently? Well, I have had some yarn purchased for me. I'm just grabbing a few things, um, which. You know, I'm partially using most of it, so I'm not going to get into that because that's not really all that exciting. Oh, yes, I will say I have moved locations again, so I'm not sure I ever shot in the intermediary because I was sitting over. I'll, I can do a pan around at the end, um, but I used to sit from where I'm sitting. I used to sit over there, and that's where I did all my podcasting, and then I moved over this way, and now I'm here with this shelf, which my husband made, and it houses my collection of cool combis, so... That's uh, non-fun or non-fun. It's a non-crochet fun thing about me. I mean, it could be non-fun. Who knows? Anyway, what I recently acquired. One of these things actually is really funny. So just let me grab them. Um, I was looking for stitch markers on Amazon. And there were so many fun ones. And I was looking for something that would be easy to take on and off when I'm making socks. Because I've been on a big sock making kick lately. And I found these. So they look like this. They come in two colors like that. So I had never seen anything like this in terms of stitch marking before and I thought these were incredible. That being said, I thought that they were going to be about the size of my ring. I thought they were going to be little like that, but they're not. They're like thrice that size, probably twice. I don't know, but yeah. So they're, they're spirally and they have kind of a pointy-ish end. It doesn't snag or anything like that. Um, but these I found out are knitting cable stitch markers. So I'm not exactly sure how one would use these because I'm not a knitter and I've never knit 
cabling in knitting, so I don't know, but that's what these are actually for. So they come in a set of six. Um, there are two or two. There's three gold and three silver. I mean, they're not obviously like not real silver, not real gold. It's like gold colored stainless steel, if I had to guess. They're really lightweight. They might be aluminum as well. Um, but these are incredible. So when I know three seems like an odd number, but I will tell you why these work for socks. So I use a pattern from Be Hooked, um, and I think I've perfected it now. Sorry, uh, my fingers are. Um, I think I've perfected it now that I have sort of the exact sock recipe for myself that I really like. So I can do it mostly from memory, but I still like to have the stitch markers. So um, in that case, you use four, and it's important to remember which one is the beginning one. So I either will use one gold and the three silver, or one silver and the three gold to denote what is the beginning of the round, because you go in a round, you don't go back and forth. So in that fashion, these have worked really, really well. Um, my only complaint I would say about them is, and this is my fault because I probably just didn't read the description well enough, honestly, is that the, it's, it's thick, it's really like thick metal that they use for this. So I haven't had trouble with it stretching the um, sock yarn stitch when I'm putting it in there, but it can be a little bit like tedious to like put it in. So I don't actually know how much time I'm saving. So that is a, an acquisition that I have made that was uh, a bit weird and spur of the moment, but it has ended up working out well. So I don't know if you are, if you're a sock maker and use stitch markers, I would recommend these. If you can find them in a thinner wire, that would be better though, I think. Um, and I don't know how well they would work for knitting socks, but crocheting socks with a four millimeter hook, they work just fine. Um, what else did I need to get? Okay, I, these came as a set and I only used the one for the intended purpose. So on my finger, I have this ring that is a feather. And then I also have this one that is a kitty. So this is actually the only one that I use for its intended purpose. These are to put your yarn on while you're crocheting because I feel like I... My hands are all caught up, by the way, as well. So um, I sort of have like a permanent line across where the yarn goes on my finger. And sometimes it gets rubbed really raw, especially when I'm using um, wool or wool blends for socks, just because it's a little bit rougher because it has to be to, you know, like keep your socks uh, standing up to wear and tear. So I got this guy and it came in the pack of two. And this one I found it didn't really, because it's too big for my finger and I couldn't squish it down enough, it was very ineffective. So I just wear it as a ring. But this one I was able to, to resize it and it fits the where I want it to on my finger. So I put the yarn through here and then I go ahead with it. Um, and it seems to be working really well. It did take some time to get used to, but I would say that it is also a success. Um, so yeah, if you get scratchy finger, I recommend, I recommend these kitty ring. There are other ones out there that they kind of look like springs and then they have like little legs that come out with circles. And I was looking at those originally, but I was like, you know what, if I'm gonna get something like this, I may as well make it fun and not so like perfunctory because I have a lot of perfunctory things and I do like fun. So kitty and feather fun. All right, I have, I feel like I bought so much stuff. I'm so terrible. Um, I finally caved in and I went the route of light bulb stitch markers um, that everybody likes. And I will say I am totally sold on these. The reason that I decided to get some of these, and I actually ended up getting a whole bunch. Um, I have them mostly color coded on other, I have more somewhere. I just don't know where they are at the moment. So I've got that. I think there's 106 or something like that, all different colors. Um, so the reason that I was looking at these is because I wanted something that was going to last a little bit longer and something that wasn't plastic because, and this one isn't doing it, but in the middle of this sort of key part of the plastic stitch markers on a bunch of the stitch markers I have been using, and in particular, the Clover ones, interestingly enough, these Walmart ones have held up a little bit better, um, but this, the plastic has started to split and I'm not entirely sure why, because I don't feel like I'm abusive with them. I don't like... I don't reef them open. I don't reef them shut. I don't crush them. I, you know, I try to be gentle with them to keep them in as good a shape as possible. But, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Maybe I've done something else to them. I have not accidentally washed them because I know like hot water and detergent can wreck stuff like that. But no, I don't have an answer as to why they're splitting and starting to snag the yarn. So, 
Uh, that's why I decided to go with the metal ones. And also these ones could be recycled, uh, which I have had because this was a very, very cheap set because I wanted to get something that was inexpensive in case I absolutely hated them. So then if I gave them away, I wasn't out a bunch of money. Um, one of the tops of a uh, lime green one, can you see? So the, it's a little bit bigger there. Um, this part, maybe if I put it right in my face, you can see there. This part here on one of them came right off. So, I mean, I put it in the recycling bin. It's good. One thing I will say though, these are very, very sharp and I was not expecting that. So, I mean, I could probably use them as safety pins in a big pinch, but they, they work really well. I did try these for sock um, making as well. And while I like the size of them and the color variation, because then that makes knowing where the beginning and the end of my stitches are a lot easier. Um, it's not very quick to open these ones and get them out and then put them back in and all of that stuff, which is why I went with those curly guys. But, um, I will say I enjoy using these to mark progress on things or where I have made an increase or decrease on something. So I have got a lot of use out of these so far. And the last thing that I have purchased that is actually going to be the next part of this video is I got myself a proper goodly sized crochet carry along bag for all of my stuff. So for a very long time, I have had, and I saw them right here, this guy, and he's actually quite dirty. Like somebody spilled something on there. There's dust around the edges, all that. I've had this to have my hooks and I talked about this on my channel before and I, I used to actually really like this. But I don't, again, I don't know if this is just quality of construction or not, but it's starting to come apart and I don't think I've had this even a year. So the elastic on the little cap here is coming off and for a long time I just tucked it in behind and then I put a needle that I was using um, like to sew. I would put a needle in there to keep it shut so then that would stay on top of the things and like and all of that. And, and then I ended up just finding that these back pouches were not as useful as I thought they would be. So I kept, I keep buttons in this one. This one, I have my measuring tape and this is, oh, here's my other stitch. Okay. I've got some more. These are my plastic ones. And then I've got a few light bulb markers in here as well. Um, and it's like, it's not that anything's necessarily bad about this. It's just, it didn't quite work out the way that I wanted. And I've always wanted something where I can keep all of my, like literally keep all of my crochet stuff together in one spot so I don't have to like I have some or had some stuff in the basement have some stuff here I would have some stuff in a project bag I'd have I have this little thing like this guy here which is really handy I don't actually I don't remember what came in this um I'm thinking oh I remember this is an old bobbin case that I repurposed I like bobbins for a sewing machine that's what came in here is empty ones and I repurposed it, repurposed this to hold my sewing and crochet needles for weaving in ends. Um, this in and of itself is handy, but it doesn't fit very well in here. So I always like have a separate place. Like I've got baskets with just like things all over. And also, I don't remember if I showed you this or not, but I kept or I keep my stitch markers in this little wooden bowl that I got at the thrift store. It was a dollar. Um, I didn't buy it for that uh, specific purpose, but that's just sort of ended up because I mean, I find stuff, I just throw it in here and this is always on like a window ledge. So I just have things kind of all over and it was frustrating me because I don't like that at all. Um, I like to have my stuff together. I like to know where it is. I like, yeah, like also though, one thing that's not great about that is if you lose one thing, you lose all of the things. So I am aware of that, but I found this bag and I really liked it. And you will notice it is a very similar color to this guy, even though this one's dirty. But the zippers are gray on here. It is a different brand, um, all of that. So we'll go through the tour of it. I know I love what's in my bag bags. And well, I have full of dog care already, of course. But it's shedding season. It's always shedding season, but it is shedding season right now. So it's got this plastic zipper pouch when you open the front flap. And this opens the entire way. This goes, you know, it's a good, a good size for whatever. Got your, your, uh, I was going to say stitch markers. Stitch markers do not go here. Crochet hooks go here. And then it's got the little shelf on the bottom so they don't just go all crazy and fall out. It does not have the thing at the top, which I kind of wish it had, but that's okay. On this one, both sides, it has these great big pockets. It's got that there as well. And then on the back, it's got other hook holes and another pouch. Then on the inside, one thing that's a little bit weird, I'm going to go into this, is right here, this is Velcro. 
and the bottom is the hooks and the top is the loop and I'm not sure if you can see that very well but this piece is longer than that so I'm assuming that you can do this with it but I'm not sure why you would want velcro and yarn together I that part that's one thing I can't figure out so there's two there's two sides and they sort of they'll butterfly up away from or together and then yeah you put the down so I I don't know what it's for so I always keep it down so I don't have to worry about my yarn getting synced I don't know what it's for though if someone could tell me that would be fantastic Okay, and then the main center part is divided into two sections. One is just nice, a big open, and it's got two little pockets inside. Then the other side has a zipper closure, so that that goes together. And then within that, there is a zipper pouch inside that goes the whole way, and then two more little pouches. So that was the one thing really that drew me to this was that it has so many pouches. It's like honestly, this is like a diaper bag, to be perfectly honest. Um, which is hilarious, actually, now that I'm thinking it would be like a briefcase of diaper stuff. But anyway, we're not using it for that. Uh, okay, we'll close this guy. Then it also has holes so that you can put your yarn through and you can keep your project in there. So that is what we're going to do. So we're going to move locations and I'm going to warn you, I put a sheet on the table that we're going to use because... It has some shiny surface and some matte surface, and sometimes you get a weird glare on it and it's really hard to see. Also, there are stains on the table that I can't get off, which always make it look dirty, which is much to my chagrin, but I promise you it is clean. I just don't want to show it and have to like field off comments of people being like, ew, that's so nasty. Not that I should care, but I mean like, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to hear it. So we're just not going to deal with it. You, you, you can know that the table looks dirty underneath, but is clean. Uh, without actually seeing it. So let's go ahead and we're going to condense all of that. So I've even got my basement items. So we're going to put these, my good scissors, my notebook that I always use, stitch markers, stitch markers, let's put that in there, and my needles and hooks and needles. So we're going to put that all together and that should be pretty fun. It's fun for me anyway. All right, we'll see you in a second. Right. There is a lot of ambient noise in the background because there is a school behind where I live and they are having outdoor phys ed. So there's just, there's just noise. We're just going to have to do that. I'll probably put a little bit of sound behind this video just to sort of distract us from that. But we're, 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 we're going to get putting things away. So I'm going to take my gigantic hook and I already know that it does not fit in here, which is okay because this is one that I use incredibly rarely and this is the accompanying needle for this is for like that extreme crochet that was really really popular a number of years ago probably like six years I'd say I can't remember I'd have to look back but it was really popular so but I'm still I'm going to put these in the outside even though I know that I'm not going to use them all that often that is the best place for them in my opinion and then, because this is a smaller thing, I'll we'll put the needles in there. And it's just nice because I'll be able to actually just grab what I want to use. Where did I put that? Because I guess I could put the notebook in there, but then it's not that easy to get. Oh, well, that's okay. I will, I will think of something. Does it fit in the side here? No, too big. I thought maybe. What's this? Oh, I found a stitch marker in here. Yeah, see? It's these guys. These are not my favorite ones. They've got like little plastic itchy bits all over the place. Um, one thing as well is I have, these are actually hair cutting scissors from a cat trimming kit that we have and no longer need because we have no more cats. And these are my good sewing scissors. So I think I may just keep these in here instead of having these and put them back in the drawer for families to use for other stuff. So that, we can put these in here maybe. Did I stick out too much? No, they don't. That is perfect. 
And then you'll also see, I don't know if you notice this, but I have a pen in here because I use these erasable, I don't really care for this color, but that's okay. So these are the friction pens by Pilot. So I like these because they have a really, really fine tip, which I like, and then you can erase them. So these are perfect. So I love these. I will keep one of these in. Well, when I find a place for that, I think that will be best. And then one other thing about these hook holders is that I like to put these ones down first. That's not the thing though, is that these are quite large loops. Um, so it's the opposite of this set because this had a lot of little ones and that is okay because we can just put the items together. So how I organize these is I always put these wooden ones with the hook side down because where they have written, I can get that out there. Where they have stamped into the side, the size is up high on the hook. So I want to be able to see right at a glance what size I'm going to use here. So I do that. Then, that's also one thing about getting that out that way is not the most fun. Let's do this bit in there. So I have from 4.5 to 7 right through on here. And then the company doesn't make the other sizes until you get to 10. And then that's it. So I have, and it's missing right now, it's somewhere else. So I have this eight clover hook. I have a nine clover hook. I think it's with another project, but I good, honest to goodness, I cannot remember for the life of me where I put it, but I'm going to leave a space for it here. And we'll put the eight up as well. So I can see, so that'd be eight, nine, and then we'll put the 10 here. And then that is that for those guys. And then I have my thick handled hooks which we have a little bit more leeway with these because they're thick handled. So we don't have to worry about putting them into a small area. So I've got, these are my little itty bitties. So 2.5, 3, 3.5, 4, and a 5.5. I'm not exactly sure why I have this one, but I have this one because I do have a 5.5 in the wooden and I have a 5.5 baits and I have another 5.5. So I would say that's probably my favorite hook size right now. So I'll put these in as well. And these ones I don't put hook side down because I just, I know the colors now, so I don't have to worry about that. I know what's what. Oops, 3 and 3.5 go together. This one, though, I'm going to have to get a new one. I'm rubbing all the whip, rubber off of it with my fingers. And then I just keep these all squished together because I have so few. Even though these are my, one of my favorite sets of hooks, I don't have that many of them. But they're the popular sizes, so that's good. Oh, we're in the thumbs up. I think, though, I'm going to keep, I'm going to leave the buttons in here because I don't know where else to put them, and I don't want to keep a jar of buttons in here because that's not something that I use all that often. Where am I going to keep this? We'll keep this here, I think, in the front or in one of these. Does it fit? No, too big. We'll keep Oh, maybe we'll put it, we'll put it with the needles on the side. Yeah, like this. This works for me. Like that. Oh my gosh, I found another hook, and I know it's it's a Susan Bates, and I know I don't know, it's another 5.5, so I have five 5.5 hooks. That is too many. That one I'm going to give to my daughter, or get rid of it and see if anybody else would like it. Okay, stitch markers now. I've got just handfuls of them, so I'll never run out. If you ever need a stitch marker, come find me. I've got lots. Um, since there's not, in my opinion, a good way of keeping these separate, oh, a whole bunch of these are open. That is not safe. Um, I'm going to do what I did, and I think I'll just add them to these ones here. I'm pretty sure that I've got them color coded mostly. I've got a bunch of black and green ones all together. Yeah, these ones are open. That's not safe, so I'll put the green ones on there. I'm gonna just gonna take these other loose little plastic ones, and we'll put them away in here. And I also, I wanted to show you the ones that um, were breaking, but now I'm looking at them and I think I probably already recycled those ones. So that's okay. Um, put these guys in as well. They're all just kind of higgledy-piggledy in here, but that's, that is all right. Because I mean, they were higgledy-piggledy in the bowl and they work just fine. So we'll just keep that as it is. Like green and gold together. That's pretty, except this giant pink one. Uh, where did red go? Here. This is so fun watching me put stitch markers onto this, isn't it? 
I usually like rainbow, so I don't know why I didn't go the rainbow route. That's okay. What more do I need from Shopping Winter? I must have got them out as a set in my mind to make something specific, but I don't know what that was because it's a very odd number of those that are sort of out together. Because usually I use, the most I usually use is four at a time, unless I have like a giant garment. There, all my green ones now are on the pink. I'll put that in there. Oh, there's not, there's one more. Why don't you tell me that? I had. It's not your fault. You're not here to tell me. There. And if it's, there's another one that's too bad. We will add that to this side. Oh, and I have this weird, it's almost like a wine color. It's actually really pretty. This is a color I would wear. I'm not too sure if you can see it all that well, but it's a really, really pretty color. Take that with the pink. Those are some black ones. There we go. This one, oh, I know what I was using with these black and white ones. I was working on a muscle barrel hat, and I think I started out with eight sides or eight points that I wanted to keep track of. Yeah, that's what it was. And because I was going in and around, round and round, I needed to know where the beginning was. All right. You know, one thing that I am sad about is there are basically no turquoise and no orange. Actually, there's no blue ones in here. I have a bunch that is missing, I bet. Yeah, there's no orange and there's no turquoise. Huh. No, there has to be blue ones other than these somewhere. I feel like I had so many more. Anyway, that's fine. That's, that's a story for another day. All right, put that back. Okay, the kitty ring. You know, I think... I'll zip this. I'm pretty sure that I'm going out of here. I still want to find some in my book. Maybe I will keep the book in. You know, this is easily accessible, and I don't want the pen rolling around, going all crazy in here. So, actually, yeah, that book fits in there sideways perfectly. I will keep the pen in there. Yeah, with that giant hook, that works for me. And then we'll put yarn in there when it's time. That's empty. And then that's empty. Does it fit through here? Oh, she does not. That's okay. We'll put kitty ring into that pouch there. So because I don't have any projects to show you on the go, there isn't anything else to show you. But I still have empty space here, here, and here. I guess I could put little scissors in there for now. All my hooks are in here. There they are. I'm missing one of these ones because otherwise they'd stay in there tight with each other and the nine that goes there. And I'm just leaving a space there just so the elastic has some breathing room. All my stitch markers in there. And when I find more, which I invariably will because I can think of two places that I have some more just hanging out doing nothing. There is. And this side, again, that side's empty. I'm going to tuck this in there because that looks sloppy. There, that's better. Nothing in here yet. Remember these guys here. And then my, I was going to call this elastic. This is not elastic. This is a measuring tape. And my needles. So I'm going to leave the needles in here for sure because this has worked really well and it can hold a ton. And it's easy to see them in there and get them in and out. And then we'll leave that in there. So there. That is how I'm going to have that laid out. So that is... I just put my hair back because I didn't want my hair in my face while I was trying to talk to you and put all of that stuff together. So I'm just going to leave it for the time being while we finish this up. So that was putting my bag all together and I'm so happy with it. And I'm really excited to put a project in there and start working on it. I have a project in mind that I'm going to get started on. Yeah, it's going to work perfectly for that. I'm excited um, and it'll be nice because I can just take it in the car with me in my little suitcase. It'll be awesome. I do still have, um, I don't have it right with me. I can see it from where I am, but it's too long to go grab it. Um, I have that little sock. I call it my sock bag. It was like my original little travel bag. I'm not going to get rid of that because I still will probably use that for socks. Um, because I think I'm thinking of camping mostly is I really like that 
but I might want to go to the beach and just work on one thing. So I would not necessarily take that, but who knows? But still, I'm not going to get rid of that because it's also a nice place to keep like little scrappy things because it has a drawstring on the top, which is nice. So um, yeah, it, that, that little project bag is still super useful. So I don't have any intentions of getting rid of that. Um, when it's not in use, actually that perfect. We're, we're brainstorming here together. Thank you. Um, I'm going to fold it up because it actually lays flat as a rectangle. I'm going to fold it and then I'll put it into that side pouch where I don't have anything right now that's got the hooks, those like big hooks, the two big hooks and, you know, and that little set of scissors that I just put in there for this painting. So thank you. Thank you for that. Life things. Okay. So I feel like I have a lot to catch you up on, but it's probably mostly like really boring and all of that stuff, but I'll only do like what's fairly recent. So my son turned 14 and that was bittersweet because I don't feel old enough to have a 14 year old, but clearly I have one. So, I mean, he came from somewhere. Um, we went to visit, we went to, visit. we went to watch the Mario movie at the theater, which was fun because we haven't gone to the movies as a family for a very, very long time. Usually it's been like me and the kids or my husband and the kids or the kids and their friends or and whatever. So that was fun. Uh, the movie was way better than I thought it was going to be. So I was really worried that it was going to be like another emoji movie, which not my favorite, not at all. Uh, but no, it was really good. So I enjoyed it. My husband enjoyed it. I think, I don't know. He's always like, it's always the same. So it's hard to gauge with him when he really likes something. And yeah, so we did that. We had some cake, some friends came by. I asked him if he wanted to have some of his friends come over and he said, no, he's like, I just really want us to all go out together. And I was like, like, okay, bud. Um, and I think the reason for that is, is because I'm pretty sure that I mentioned it last time. I can't remember, but I have a second job that's part-time. So I am out of the house a lot. I work 60 to 70 hours a week between my day job and the evening job. And this June, it has the potential to go up more because there's somebody that's leaving and I'm just like, Oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, so there'll be a lot of hours to pick up. Uh, between me and one other person. So uh, I don't know how I'm going to make it work, but I'm going to try. So June might be a bit of a write-off. We'll see. We'll see. Um, I signed up for a 10K race in June, June 17th, I think the day is. Um, so I'm going to need to book that day off. I believe it's a Saturday. Um, it is for a run for women's mental health, which is very important. Um, if anybody of you knows my story, I might get into it one day. I'll probably make a video about it because, yeah, I don't know. There's a lot of details, a, a lot of things that went going on around that. So that is an important cause for me. I'm trying to raise some money for that. Um, oh, okay. My son's in badminton and we were taking him to a badminton. It was an exhibition game. They have one, sorry, they have one every year. And I was going and my car is a six speed manual transmission. I am no stranger to manual transmission. Good at it. Don't grind the gears. Pretty good. Um, and we're going and I put it in first and it just absolutely just won't go unless the RPMs are really high. So the RPMs is the revolutions per minute for those of you who are not aware and I'm not trying to be insulting, but I just want to have a really quick educational thing uh, for how we go. So the art, most vehicles, it'll show the RPMs, even in an automatic, because that's kind of how you can start telling something is wrong. So high RPMs, you'll be able to hear it, but the, the engine goes, Ree! maybe not necessarily that sound, but the RPM, you like, it's like a vacuum cleaner. It's the gears are moving really, really, really fast. It's the revolutions per minute. And the higher number, the higher. And then it'll also have, at the end of the gauge, it'll have a red zone. And you don't want to have the vehicle up there for a super long time because you can blow the engine. So we're getting, I'm in first and I have to get the RPMs up to like 4,500, which is a lot. It's a lot. Normally you put it in first, press the gas. It's like 2000 and it's going. So yeah, I'm going and it's not going, it's not going. It's 5,500. So red starts at 7,000 in my car. And finally it starts going and I try, you know, I'm like, okay, this is super weird because like we should be going honestly like a bat at a hill at 4,500 RPMs in first because it's a lot of like torque and then it pushes the vehicle, but it's not responding. So I was like, okay, tried putting it in second. So I was like, maybe something's wrong with first, same thing, second, same thing, third. And the weird thing is, is I have a digital dash that says, not all of it's digital, but this part is. 
So it'll tell you, like, I know I'm in first, but on the, on the gauge on the dashboard will also say, you know, one through six or R. And I don't know why it's doing this, but it's saying when I'm in three, that I'm in one, but it's not performing like it's in one or three. It's just not performing properly at all. I like, okay, put it in five, says it's in three, then it says it's four without me shifting. All of a sudden, you know, so I'm pulling over and I'm like, okay, buddy, really, really sorry, but we're not going to be able to go because the car is just not moving. The fastest I could get it to go was probably 60, but even then I don't really believe it. And that's 60 kilometers per hour. Um, so we get turned around to go back home and the car again, it just, it won't go, it won't go. Getting it up to 5,000 RPM in first, just to get some momentum to get going. Then all of a sudden, bang! And I was like, shit. So, sorry. Um, pull off as much as I can to the side of the road. And I turn the car off, turned it back on. Engine still goes. That part's good. Try shifting. Nothing. Put the clutch down. Nothing. Smoke starts coming out. And I was like, oh. So what I hypothesize happened is I think I blew the transmission because it, while I wasn't in the red zone, I was keep, it was high. And it was high for an extended period of time without shifting out of the gear. So I think I blew the transmission. My husband thinks I wrecked the clutch, which I don't know. Um, the smoke was weird. Um, it didn't stop immediately. Like I slammed on the brakes because I was like, crap, loud noise, big bang. I, you could feel the car jolt when that happened. Not good. So that, that happened. Um, so the car's sitting currently in the garage up on some jacks. And I really hope, I kind of hope it's the clutch because it's a cheap fix. I looked up what a brand new transmission from Subaru would cost. It's over $7,000. And I'm just like, that's almost, that's over half of what the car cost to buy. So, and it, that was a few years ago. Granted, my husband desperately wants to keep this vehicle alive because it's very rare. It is one of 250, I think. They were made for a very short period of time. It's a Subaru Legacy with some special engine. It's a GT. I don't know. It's nice. It's a really nice car. Like I've cried many tears over its unfortunate semi-demise, but I mean, it's a good car. We'll see what we can do. So that is that. I've been driving my husband's truck, which I don't love because the thing is gigantic. It is what we pull our trailer with. It's huge. I hate it. <laughs> I hate driving it. It's so big. So that's been exciting. That is like the most kind of like recent news that has come up in our house. Um, what else? Yeah, I would like to say like nothing's happened, but I feel like a lot of things have happened, which is why I haven't been podcasting. So nothing that I think anybody would find exciting, really. It's like humdrum daily things that just kind of like keep piling up and keep you from doing things that you want. But it's like, it's life, right? So, I mean, you got to do what you got to do. So that's that. Okay, I think before I bore you all to death, I will wrap this up. For today, um, I am really, really, really planning and trying to keep myself accountable to have another episode out next week for all of you guys as well so that we can keep going with this. So next week, we will be back to somewhat regularly scheduled programming. I'll show you what I'm working on, what I am done, if I'm done anything, and we might talk about all the sucks that I've made. I don't know. If you like these videos, thank you. You can show your gratitude by pressing the thumbs up, which will give it a like. You can also subscribe and you can hit the bell to get notified for the next time that I upload a video. I will see you all next time and I hope you have a great time until the next time we meet. Bye!